Live from the Carl Chevrolet Studios in West Des Moines, this is Iowa Live. Welcome back to the program, everyone. Here's a smiley face we haven't seen for, oh, a little while. Say good morning to Professor Jeff Stein. Hey, Mr. Stein, how are you? Just smiling, looking at you. <laughs> oh, we have a segment here called the Iowa Almanac where we teach you about something that happened on this day in Iowa history. And uh, just watching all over the place, you can see how active airports are getting again. And we think of nothing of going to the airport, jumping on a plane, traveling long distances. But uh, back in the day, it was relatively a new invention. And boy, we have a great story about an Iowan who said, you know what, I'm going to fly. Tell us that story. You know, it's great, Lou, if you're able to discover something you like from a young age. And from his youngest days, Arthur J. Hartman of Burlington was restless. In fact, he once told his wife he couldn't stand just looking at four walls. And that is what led him to the sky. On September 6th of 1903, when he was only 15 years of age, Art Hartman made his first solo flight in a balloon. Now, that was even before the Wright brothers took to the sky. And Art soon got a job, get this, parachuting from balloons. But he was convinced that the future of powered flight lay in what is known as heavier than air craft. And before he was 22 years of age, Art had built his own monoplane. Wow, uh, jumping out of balloons as a job, uh, as a parachuter, that is interesting. But he wanted to fly. He wanted to have his own plane, and a lot of people apparently wanted to see him do that. Yeah, you could look into that parachuting from balloons in case <laughs> this TV thing doesn't work out the way you like. I don't know that I'd recommend it. But early on the morning of May 10th, this date, 1910, on a stretch of the Burlington Country Club, Art Hartman tested his plane in front of spectators. Five of them, five people watched. The plane flew. Now granted, only 10 feet in the air, the height of a basketball hoop, and not very far, but it still flew. And that made it the very first flight of heavier than aircraft in Iowa. But it flew. That was the important thing. And that was merely the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, and it actually landed after flying, which was a pretty good thing back then, too. <laughs> after World War I, Hartman rebuilt and sold crashed planes, and he even started his own airplane manufacturing company in 1928. He never stopped testing aircraft. In fact, in 1956, at the age of 67, he hooked 50 hydrogen balloons to a bicycle and soared 150 feet in the air. Now, put some perspective on that. That's 15 times higher than his first flight in a monoplane a half century before. And Art Hartman kept flying in one way or another until his death in 1971 at the age of 82. Now, there were some 46 flights by 23 aviators across our state between 1910 and 1911 alone. But the very first was by Art Hartman in Burlington. And it happened on this date, Lou, in 1910. Wow, I wonder if there is an Art Hartman airport anywhere over uh, in eastern Iowa, anywhere. It would only make sense. There would have to be some type of uh, dedication to him. Yeah, we have named so many airports for people uh, who, you, or the roads nearby. You've got Wright Brothers Boulevard in Cedar Rapids because the Wright Brothers once lived in Cedar Rapids. So, again, he is well remembered there in southeast Iowa. That is awesome. All right, people want to go back and revisit what you just talked about or uh, find out other things that happen on certain days in Iowa history. Where can they go? Go to iowaalmanac.com. That's where you can hear the stories that we talk about on the radio across the state every day, iowaalmanac.com, also Twitter and Instagram at Iowa Almanac. Uh, Professor Jeff Stein, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your sunshiny afternoon. We'll talk to you next time. Great to see you, Lou. Thanks. Good to see you too, my friend.